Hello everybody welcome to our channel Radiology Interesting Update. Today we will talk about how to read cervical spine x-ray. In this video we will review the 10 steps for reading a lateral cervical spine x-ray. One way to remember these 10 steps is ABCs. 1. Adequacy. 2. Alignment. 3. Audi, anterior at landodendral interval 4. BDI. Bayesian dental interval 5. Base of dents. 6. Bony abnormalities. 7. Cartilage discs. 8. Cartilage facets. 9. Soft tissues. 10. Scan the periphery. Step 1. Adequacy. Make sure that you can visualize the entire C spine to the C7 T1 interface. Failure to visualize the 7th cervical vertebra and the C7-T junction is the most common error made in the radiographic assessment of cervical spine injury. Step 2. Alignment. Make sure there is no rotation present. Rotation will be seen when left and right diamond-shaped lateral masses of each vertebra are not superimposed. Look at this image. Make sure that the anterior longitudinal ligament line, also anterior vertebral line, posterior longitudinal ligament line, also posterior vertebral line, spinolaminar line and tips of spinous processes fall along a smooth and continuous line. Step 3. Audi, anterior at landodendral interval. Make sure the anterior at landodendral interval, also called predental space, is less than 3 mm in adults and less than 5 mm in children. Step 4. BDI, Bayesian Dendral Interval, make sure the Bayesian Dens Interspace is less than 12 mm. Bayesian Dental Interval BDI. It is the distance from the most inferior portion of the Bayesian to the closest point of the superior aspect of the Dens in the median, mid-sagittal, plane. Step 5. Base of dens make sure the ring of C2 is smooth and continuous. Step 5. Base of dens check for a fat C2. Fat C2 sign refers to the apparent increase in the distance between the anterior and the posterior margins of the C2 vertebra when compared with the similar two margins of the C3 vertebrae on a lateral cervical spine x-ray in a trauma setting. Step 6. Bony abnormalities inspect each bone, vertebral body, pedicle, articular mass, lamina, spinous process, from top to bottom. The majority of missed fractures are at the upper and lower cervical segments. Step 7. Cartilage discs. Check for uniform disc spaces between vertebrae. Step 8. Cartilage facets. Make sure that the space between opposing facets is parallel and that joint space is uniform. Step 9. Soft tissues. Make sure that the prevertebral tissue is within the expected size range. 6 mm at C2. 22 mm at C6. Or above C4, soft tissues less than 50% of the width of a vertebral body. Below C4 the limit is one full vertebral body width. Step 10. Scan the periphery. Briefly view base of skull, mandibles, anterior neck. Also evaluate sinuses, occiput, mandible, airway, epiglottis, hyoid bone, trachealair shadow. Finally, check for foreign bodies. Open mouth view. Same steps for open mouth view. Adequacy and alignment. No overlap by teeth or skull base. Dens, spinous process, lateral masses are all symmetrically aligned. Bones. Base of dens, body of C2, C1 lateral masses. Cartilage. Articular spaces between C1 and C2 are even and the image that's now there. Anteroposterior view. Same steps for AP films, adequacy and alignment, spinous processes midline and evenly spaced. Bones. Vertebral bodies, uncinate processes, lateral masses, spinous processes, cartilage, disc spaces uniform in height to the end. CT or plain film? In reality CT commonly performed due to higher sensitivity, 
wide availability and speed of image acquisition. CT recommended if, high clinical suspicion of injury, even if normal X-ray. Inadequate plain film study. Suspicious plain film findings. Fracture seen on plain X-rays. Lack of CT availability mean plain film is often first line. This is the end of our lecture, thank you for watching, and goodbye.